A few months ago, I built an all-SSD NAS using a Raspberry Pi 5 and a Quad SATA hat from Radsa. By adding a 25 gig Ethernet adapter, I managed to get pretty good transfer speeds out of it. I got 260 megabytes per second writing files to the NAS and 200 megabytes per second reading files from the NAS. Following that video, Terramaster reached out about an all-new SSD NAS that they're launching this week. This is the new F8 SSD+. Plus. It's their first NAS that is designed to be used with SSDs only, and internally it's got space for 8 M.2 NVMe drives. There are two versions of this NAS. This is the higher-end F8 SSD+, Plus, which has an i3 processor and 16 gigs of RAM. This version will retail for $800. And then they've got a lower spec F8 SSD. This has an N95 processor and 8 gigs of RAM, and will retail for $600. Along with the F8 SSD+, Plus, included in the box is a CAT6E Ethernet cable, although not a particularly long one, a power cable for the supply, a screwdriver and screws for installing the NVMe drives, the power supply, and a set of 8 heat sinks to help with keeping the drives cool. This is quite a nice inclusion which I wasn't expecting to see. First up, this NAS is pretty small. It's not much bigger than a single physical 3.5 inch drive that a traditional NAS would use. It's a minimalistic design, which I quite like. There isn't much on the three sides. On the bottom we've got two 50mm PWM fans. These draw air in through the bottom and exhaust it out the top of the NAS. On the back we've got the power input, HDMI 2.1 port, a 10 gig Ethernet port, two USB 3.2 ports and a USB Type-C port above it. On the top we've got the ventilation holes and a power button. They say that this is a toolless design, and it certainly is to open it up. We've just got a single thumb screw at the back. This allows the internal chassis to slide out and we can then access the board and drives. I think calling it a toolless design is a bit of a stretch, as you still need to secure your storage drives with a screw, and they include a screwdriver for that. There are some ways that they could have made it truly toolless, but this is really nitpicking. It's not a difficult job to do. Internally we've got a 16 gig stick of DDR5 RAM running at 4800 MHz. You can upgrade this to 32 gigs. The CPU is under the heatsink at the bottom, directly above the fans. This is an 8-core Intel i3 N305 processor, with a maximum frequency of 3.8 GHz. Then we've got our 8 M.2 NVMe ports. These are all PCI Express Gen 3x1 ports. This may sound disappointing at first glance, but each of these ports are individually capable of saturating the 10 gig network connection, so there shouldn't be any issues with these. Through these 8 ports, we can connect up to 64 terabytes of storage. Next, let's get the drives installed. I'm using 4 crucial P3 Plus drives. These are just for testing. If you're going to be using drives in a NAS long term, then you should get NAS grade drives that have better endurance. First, we need to fit a heatsink to each drive. These are held in place with an included band on each end. I don't really like this solution, as I'm not sure how long these bands are going to last. But I do like that the heat sinks are fitted directly to the drive, and they look like they're quite good quality. With all four drives installed, we can slide the board back into the enclosure, plug in our power supply and network cable, and then boot it up. By default, the F8 runs Terramaster's latest operating system called TOS 6. It's based on Linux, but they've given the web interface a Windows 11 look and feel. On first boot, you'll be guided through a setup process, which will install TOS 6 onto the available drives and set up a drive pool. By default, drives are set up using their T-RAID system. There's a bit to go through in understanding how this works, but it's essentially quite similar to RAID 5, providing a good balance of redundancy and storage capacity, but it also allows for the flexibility to use different capacity drives within the array. TOS 6 has done away with the traditional dashboard style layout with desktop icons and have instead included a taskbar along the top. This has little tooltips that come up to guide you around. It feels fairly intuitive to use. It's even got a sidebar to monitor system stats and this can be modified by dragging and dropping modules. It also includes a notification bar. I really like their drive management and backup options. 
You can even set up an email address to email notifications to if errors with drives or processes are detected. I also like their file management windows. Again, this has a Windows 11 look and feel, but that makes it quite intuitive. You've got right click options for files and folders, and you can create shares directly from this interface. You can even preview some file types like photos. You can quickly search for settings or features, so you don't have to waste time looking through all the menus. They also have a good array of available apps. If you can't find what you're looking for there, you can quite easily install Docker to deploy your own containerized applications. The CPU in this NAS has a good amount of headroom to run these, so it'll work quite well as a small home lab. So that's a brief overview of TOS 6. If you don't like their software, you can also install your own operating system like TrueNAS or Unraid if you'd prefer. Now let's do some transfer speed tests. Transferring a small 256 megabyte file, I get fairly consistent writes of around a little over 1000 megabytes per second and reads of around 850 megabytes per second. Going up to a 1 gig file, we get very similar results. Transferring a 64 gig file started off much slower. We start at 500 megabytes per second, but this then ramped up during the first half of the transfer and eventually settled at a little under 1000 megabytes per second for the remainder of the write. Reading the 64 gig file was stable, but was again slower than the smaller files, at a little under 750 megabytes per second. So both reads and writes were about 100 megabytes per second slower with the large 64 gig file. Running a real world transfer test in Windows 11, copying a large 70 gig video file to the NAS, Wright started off by saturating the 10 gig ethernet connection at 1.1 gigabytes per second. This dropped off quite quickly though and eventually settled at a little under 650 megabytes per second. Reading the same file from the NAS was much faster. We stayed at a stable 1.1 gigabytes per second for most of the transfer, with just a couple of short dips. So overall that's pretty good performance for file transfers. Like with my other NAS reviews, this is straight out of the box with the default setup. I haven't done any tweaking or optimizing of settings. The F8 SSD Plus is very quiet as it doesn't emit any physical drive noise. Fan noise is also minimal. You can hardly hear the fans running when it's at idle. The ambient level in this room is about 32 decibels, so the fans running at low speed barely register. When writing to the drives or doing CPU intensive tasks, you can hear the fans spin up, but they're not much louder. We get up to about 39 to 40 decibels. Power consumption will obviously vary with the type and quantity of drives installed. With my 4 drive setup with no load, we get a power consumption of 14 watts. And this goes up to 35 watts when writing to all 4 drives and saturating the network connection. TOS 6 does have an option to put the drives to sleep if there's no activity for a period of time. This should further decrease the idle power consumption. They say down to 9 watts in their documentation, and this seems reasonable from my results. As far as limitations go, most NAS products in this sort of price point would come with a secondary network connection. So it would have been nice to see a 2.5 gig network port alongside the 10 gig as a secondary port or failover. But with the USB ports on the top, you could easily add an external adapter like I did with my PiNAS. Each M.2 port also only supports PCI Express Gen 3x1. This sounds slow, but it has to do with the PCIe lane limitations of the processor. The i3 N305 processor has 9 PCIe lanes. Terramaster have distributed these over the 8 drives and the 10 gig ethernet port, providing one for each lane. I think they've made a good choice here, as the drives would individually saturate the 10 gig port in any case, so you're not actually losing any drive speed. It's worth keeping in mind when choosing drives though, as you can save some money by buying older drives that work well with the available interface. The only other limitations I could find are that it doesn't have ECC memory and is missing native support for ZFS. Overall, I think it's a great product and I haven't been able to find any significant issues with it. There are a few features that would have been nice to have included since it is quite pricey, but once you add an NVMe adapter for 8 drives, along with 10 gig ethernet to a PC of similar size and performance, you'll probably be around the same price point too. Let me know in the comments section if you think I should have a go at building my own single board computer based NAS with similar functionality. Also let me know if you've got any comments or questions on the F8 SSD+. Thanks for watching. 
please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.